a royal cancer diagnosis. Tonight on The Rundown, the stunning announcement from Princess Kate, who says she's undergoing chemotherapy. What we know about her health right now. Plus, a major break in a decades-old cold case. First on four, how police are finally able to identify a victim 25 years after she was killed. Then... A type of demonstration that you've likely never seen before. I'm Mauricio Casillas, ahead on News 4, why a group of elementary school students held a walkout at their campus today. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. A lot to get to tonight. Thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown. It's our newscast streaming for you. And I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Leon Harris. It is Friday, March 22nd. And we're going to begin with a Storm Team 4 weather alert tonight. Well, that's just for a second. A live look outside on this Friday. Can we look at this? Looking Beautiful. good. Beautiful. Looking Cherry good. Cherry blossoms, dry city conditions. That's about to change, though. Yeah, that's right. Uh, future weather shows mm -hmm. the mess that's moving in tonight and overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Storm Team 4 meteorologist Amelia Draper with now what you need to know as we kick off the weekend. Amelia. We're in Storm Team 4 weather alert mode tonight with heavy rain falling out there on your Saturday that could lead to flooding. The National Weather Service issuing a flood watch for most of the region. Everyone here in green starting at 2 a.m. on Saturday and running through 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Here's 11 o'clock on your Friday. We have showers across the area, but the rain intensifies overnight into early Saturday morning, 6 a.m. It's raining heavily in spots. Heavy rain continues at times right on through the rest of the morning and midday hours. Heading on into the afternoon hours, the intensity of the rain starts to lessen. Just some showers out there around 2 o'clock. And the rain is out of here by about 3, 4 p.m. But we'll pick up about 1 to 2 and a half inches of rain, especially in that flood watch. So if you can avoid travel on your Saturday, especially during the morning hours, that's going to be the way to go. As we head on into Sunday, it's breezy out there. A high temperature tomorrow, 57, 54 on Sunday with plenty of sunshine. Definitely the better of the two weekend days. Monday, a high temperature near 60 degrees, not a bad day, and then the chance for more rain on Wednesday. Stay with Storm Team 4 for weather updates right at your fingertips. Just scan the QR code you see there on the screen to download the NBC Washington app. You can track live radar in your neighborhood and get breaking weather updates sent to your phone. Speaking of your phone, you've probably seen a lot about this already. Big news from across the pond that's rippling our way. Kate, Princess of Wales, announcing that she's undergoing treatment for cancer. This evening's video message comes after weeks of speculation about Kate's whereabouts and her health status following a hospital stay and silences at uh, the royal rumor mill finally. Yes, yeah, so here's the big takeaways that we've learned today. Kate's cancer was found during a test and it's falling abdominal surgery in January. She's now undergoing a round of preventative chemotherapy. That's right, but we still don't even know what type of cancer the mm -hmm. princess has. In her taped message today, the 42-year-old said that she is in the early stages of her chemotherapy and that the announcement took some time for her to make. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Reaction to the news of her cancer diagnosis has been flooding in. Buckingham Palace released a statement from King Charles III that said, quote, so proud of Catherine for her courage in speaking as she did. End quote there. According to, to Palace spokespeople, King Charles has remained in close contact with his beloved daughter-in-law over the past weeks. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan also issued a statement saying that they are wishing for health and healing for Kate. They say that they're hopeful she's able to do so in peace. It's not clear when Kate will make her next public appearance. The palace has said that she is not expected to attend Easter service. And if you've been following the speculation and intrigue on this one, we'll keep you up to date when we get developments throughout the weekend to stay with NBC4. Breaking news updates on your phone, on air, and at NBCWashington.com. All right, now to four things to note tonight. The House passed a massive funding package to keep the government workers on the job and with paychecks. But lawmakers in the Senate are on a tight deadline. There are just hours to go until funding for several major agencies runs out. The Senate will need to pass 
a $1.2 trillion plan, giving it the green light before tonight's midnight deadline. According to Russian media reports, 40 people were killed and more than 100 were hurt in an apparent terror attack tonight. Several government, govern, gunmen rather, allegedly entered a concert hall near Moscow and opened fire and threw explosives, leading to a huge fire. It's being called the worst terror attack in Russia in two decades. According to the ISIS-affiliated news agency Amok, ISIS did claim responsibility for the attack but has not provided any proof. Russian police are searching for the gunmen now. The United Nations resolution calling for a ceasefire and hostage deal in Gaza has failed. Russia and China, who are permanent members, voted against the U.S.-backed proposal. The resolution would have protected civilians and allowed for deliveries of critical humanitarian aid into the territory. This was the fourth attempt to pass a ceasefire resolution at the Council. Major League Baseball launching a formal investigation into the illegal gambling and theft allegations involving Los Angeles Dodgers star Shohei Otani and his interpreter, Ipe Mizohara. Mizohara was let go from the team Wednesday following reports about his alleged ties to an illegal gambling operation. Otani's attorneys say that he is the victim of a massive theft. MLB's commissioner's office says that the Department of Investigations began its formal probe there today. Mm. We'll follow that one as it goes forward. Mm -hmm. All right, new developments tonight to talk about. A teen accused of shooting and killing a 14-year-old boy is in jail tonight after turning himself into the poli to police. Rather, The victim was a student at Westfield High School in Chantilly, and our Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey tells us what police and st school officials are saying about the death of a very young victim. Julie? A life was taken. Sharp I mean, I think words from the Fairfax County difference. Police Chief about words a shooting that claimed a young life. The life of a 14-year-old child was simply not lost the other day. It was taken by a gunman who intentionally shot and killed one of our children. Fairfax County School Superintendent Michelle Reed joining the chief. She says they focused extra counseling today at Westfield High, where the victim attended school, and Herndon High, where students knew the victim. Anytime a student a student's life is taken before its time is a tremendous loss for us. And the proliferation really of uh, gun violence with our youth is a significant challenge for us across the country. The alleged gunman, 18-year-old Ismael Cruz Del Cid, had graduated recently from Fairfax County's Mountain View Alternative High School. Yesterday, police released this photo to the public as they intensified their search. Last night, his attorney called to negotiate a plan for Cruz Del Cid to turn himself in. The shooting happened around 3.30 Wednesday afternoon in a parking lot outside a Herndon Hotel. This is what one eyewitness told our news partner, Telemundo 44, that she saw before the gunfire. Bueno, ellos venían. All of them started kicking each other. When I saw this, I began yelling at them. What's going on? What's happening? Police say Cruz Del Cid broke away from the fight, firing three gunshots at the victim and another boy. Two of the bullets hit the victim. The other teen was uninjured. Law enforcement sources say the shooter and the other teens were associated with groups who had been feuding. We believe there's ongoing verbal disputes. We don't know if there was any prior physical altercations between the parties, but they were definitely known to each other. Cruz Del Cid ran off after the shooting, leaving his car behind. Police are still working to determine the motive and whether or not the teens had planned to meet before the fight. Julie Carey, thank you for that. And Ismael Cruz del Cid did not make a statement to police when he turned himself in last night. He's being held without bond. Prince George's County Police issued an arrest warrant for one of the men accused of shooting a postal worker outside of a fast food restaurant in District Heights. 22-year-old Raheem Hawkins Bozeman is facing first-degree murder charges in connection with the death of Jessica Somerville. Police say that Hawkins Bozeman and another suspect are seen here on this surveillance video moments before the shooting outside of a Subway restaurant on Silver Hill Road this past Sunday. Investigators are offering a $25,000 reward now for any information leading to an arrest. And Leon, a group of local students are proving you're never too young to make your voice heard. Okay. Fourth and fifth graders at Veers Mill Elementary held a walkout today to express their concerns over the school losing its Title I status. That's right. That, that would mean that the school would get less federal funding and they would have to cut certain programs and positions there at the school next year. News 4's Mauricio Casilla spoke with some students and parents there about the impact. <laughs> Dozens of Veers Mill Elementary students learning an important lesson in civic engagement. News 4 was unable to record video of the walkout, but several parents did and passed it along to us. 
This protest wasn't organized by parents. The kids did it themselves. Beatrix Padilla and Callie Williams have been working on this for weeks. Who knows, I could actually make a change. What if they actually see this? We're making history. We're making history for this school. Look. MCPS recently announced Veers Mill was one of four schools that would lose its Title I status, something the school system says is calculated based on poverty data. Six other schools within the district will gain Title I status. The loss in funding means Veers Mill is expected to lose four teaching positions, enrichment programs, summer school, and other events like literacy and STEM nights. I just really like my reading and math teachers. And um, if we lose Title I, then I won't have them. Several parents, like Laurel Kennedy, were on hand to support. We just kind of thought, like, well, what can we do about this? And the girls had um, this idea had been floating around about a walkout, and they took it on. Montgomery County Public Schools sent news for a statement that reads in part, quote, it goes without saying that our focus on equity remains no matter the Title I status of any school. Title I funds aid in this, but their absence at any school does not mean we deviate from this work, end quote. And while Title I status isn't something the students can change, they can highlight some of the needs they'll have without it. MCPS says efforts are underway to reduce the impact by adding an additional full-time teacher for next school year. I'm just really proud of these kids, and I hope that we can learn something from them. MCPS says it's in the preliminary stages of coordinating a free summer school program here through a partnership with education services company Innovation Learning, but nothing is set in stone yet. Reporting in Silver Spring, Mauricio Casillas, News 4. Now to a story first on 4. 25 years ago, a woman was found murdered on an abandoned farm in Charles County. Investigators had no idea who she was, and for more than two decades, she remained a Jane Doe. That was until a relative saw a cold case story right here on News 4 last year and called the sheriff's office. And tonight, Megan McGrath reports investigators finally know the identity of this victim. So unfortunately, um, we didn't have a lot in this case. Um, everything we had fit into one box. Investigators didn't have much to go on. They came up with this composite sketch, but for 25 years, the woman found dead on an abandoned farm in Charles County remained a Jane Doe until now. A relative of the victim recently saw our cold case story on NBC4 and called a former co-worker who now happens to be on the forensic team working the case. So it was a shock. It's somebody I hadn't spoken to in 10 years. I ended up asking her to send a photo. Um, when I saw the photo, I immediately was taken back by the striking similarities between the sketch and Laquanda. Her name is Laquanda Williams, but most people called her Nisi. Her killer is still out there, but learning the victim's name is a big break. The name is huge, as we know we have a starting point now. It's powerful. Uh, for 25 years, we've had no answer as to who this lady was sitting in our field. Investigators learned that Nisi Williams grew up in Anacostia. Is the brushy area where Laquanda Williams' body was found. She was 31 years old when her naked body was found June 18, 1998. She was hidden in some brush on an old farm in Bell Alton. That's south of La Plata off Route 301. There was an abandoned house and three motels nearby. Investigators don't know if she was killed there or somewhere else. We're going to be reaching out to the community uh, in Washington, D.C. for their help and say, hey, do you know Nisi? Do you, did you know her in the summer of 1998? Do you know what, who she was hanging out with? Was she dating someone? Did she have enemies? The Charles County Sheriff's Office is now working with D.C. police, and they have some new leads. Now that we've got a wealth of information, we're, we, we feel energetic about it, optimistic for sure, and then working with the Metropolitan Police Department with the information they have, I think uh, we're going in the right direction. The only thing that looks the same is the brush along that driveway in that building right there, which used to be a tow company. A lot has changed over the years in the area where she was found. Trees and brush cut, the old house torn down. But the commitment to closing the case remains the same. We never stop pursuing justice for our victims. After decades of wondering, the family has found some closure in confirming Nisi's death. In a statement, they described her as a compassionate giver who always served others with a smile. Though cut short, her life was a testament of grace and perseverance. 25 years later, they're asking anyone with information to come forward and help put her killer behind bars. Megan McGrath, News 4.
A positive pup date this weekend. 20 dogs and 11 puppies at the center of the Valentine's Day shooting that unfolded on Hannah Place Southeast are up for adoption. You may remember they were recovered after three police officers in D.C. were shot attempting to serve a warrant on animal cruelty charges. Yeah, 11 of these dogs are now ready to go to new homes. You can meet them tomorrow at the Humane Rescue Alliance along Oglethorpe Avenue if you're interested. If the dogs are still available on Sunday, adoption fees are going to be cut in half at an event on Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. Those dogs have uh, been at the center of quite a story. That's right. And whatever happened at that house was not their fault, so you can't hold it against the dogs. That's absolutely oh, true. I hope they get good homes. Absolutely. And coming up here on the rundown this weekend is most likely your last guest at our beloved cherry blossoms this season. The ways to see the trees and maybe make some friends along the way. Okay. And this. Coming up, it's time to start gardening. We're previewing this year's biggest landscaping trends. And here's a hint, there'll be a lot of buzz about it. Next in For Your Home. Welcome back to The Rundown. As temperatures start to rise, we'll start to spend more time outside. And now is the time so your neighbors don't give you side eye to get <laughs> your garden and your backyard ready. That's right. And today we're hearing from a local landscape architect about some trends for the season from native plants to pergolas hmm. and the uh, surprising feature that more and more people are asking for these days all into I'm Joseph Richardson. I'm a landscape architect and this is the time of year to start thinking about your garden. So when we're starting to think about wildlife friendly gardens and gardens that tend to be our owner's sanctuary we start to think about particular species that are native tend to be inviting to wildlife, particularly birds, bees, insects, uh, require a little irrigation to be established and then require relatively minimal ongoing maintenance. Perennials are our favorite. Uh, you probably have the biggest diversity of color, bloom time. Apiaries, common term is a, a beehive, right? Um, it's becoming a more popular request. I think most people are surprised to learn that you can have it almost anywhere. We have had rooftop gardens in downtown DC. We have a lot of clients who are working from home. So what is the view from their office window? What does it look out towards? Uh, is it a flowering tree? Is it a sculpture? Is it a water feature? Technology is creeping into the landscape. Irrigation. There are smart controllers now, uh, controllers that sync up to weather services um, and can adjust or dial in the amount of watering given uh, the local weather. There's also lighting. Landscape lighting is, is one, of the, uh, one of the tools that we have to create unique special spaces. In a very cost of effective manner, you can control these uh, systems using wireless technology. So apps from your cell phone or from your iPad or from a remote location. Pergolas are really on trend and in their simplest form, they could be wood structures that provide just a little bit of shade. At the extreme, we've got uh, more complex structures with automatic or controllable louvers. So depending on the time of the day, you can dial in the appropriate amount of sunlight or shade. And then extreme weather, the louvers can completely close and create a watertight space below. Uh, one more note here. Richardson says another popular feature is a smokeless fire pit so that offers all the benefits and the coziness of a real flame, but it doesn't fill up your backyard with plumes of smoke and you don't go inside smelling like Smokey the Bear. For days. For days. All right, speaking of days, it is 126 of them until the Olympic opening ceremonies, That's but who's right. counting? And they are coming, the opening ceremonies, to a big screen near you. That's right. Coverage is going to air at more than 150 IMAX theater locations on July 26th. This marks the first time the opening ceremonies will be shown live in IMAX. Mike Tirico, Peyton Manning, and Kelly Clarkson are going to host this year's broadcast for the one-of-a-kind event. And not yet clear just how much the tickets are going to cost, but they'll go on sale on Fandango this summer. Hmm. And don't forget, News 4 is your Olympic station all summer long. Jumi Bonjour Olabanji is going to be in <laughs> Paris covering the big stories for us and all of our local athletes. And we got quite a few of them who are going. You'll see them all right here on News 4. Mm -hmm. All right, you finally made it to the weekend. And if you haven't made your plans just yet, don't worry, we've got you covered. Well, at least Tommy does. He explains it all coming up here now in the weekend scene. <laughs> All week long, we've been finding friendship. And now that it's the weekend, 
You ready to try? The Cherry Blossom Festival, a sign of friendship between the United States and Japan is still going strong. How about making some new friends or strengthening some old friendships? At the Tidal Basin, they'll be sure to check in with Storm King 4 before you do that. If you're wanting to get away from the busy spots to see blossoms, Congressional Cemetery, Haynes Point, plenty of great viewing. And we've got a whole guide up on the NBC Washington app. And since you can't take the blossoms home with you, really do not do that. Huge no no. The National Arboretum has blossoms for viewing, and you can purchase some native plants. Their annual plant sale is on Saturday. Get your thrills for opening weekend at both Kings Dominion and Six Flags. Perfect for groups. Friendship as you know, can be forged or broken over games. If you've ever played an intense game of Risk or Uno, you know what I'm talking about. There's a dabble of Scrabble at Planet Word and it's inside. You can chat with Scrabble experts and play while you're watching the North American School Scrabble Competition. Yes, Kha'Zix is a real word and it's worth 392 points. Fun fact, the highest scoring word ever used in a competition. Lake Ann Plaza in Reston is full of color for the Holly Festival. It's free to go and they recommend you grab your squad and have a blast. This festival is totally free to attend, so bring all of your friends, the more the merrier. We're gonna have cultural programs, dancing, and lots of fun stalls, henna, food, everything you can think of. And if you want, you can participate in our color throw, which should be tons of fun. It's going to be a good time. And you've, you've had Holly celebrations here where you in live, too. In my neighborhood, yeah. See, and it, I, it looks messy as you know what, but it yeah. looks like it's fun. It looks like a lot of fun. And everyone <laughs> leaving there always seems like they're having a great time. They're always smiling, always laughing. Yeah, I haven't seen one fight yet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so much more going on on the NBC Washington app. And plenty of chances to spend big when you win this weekend, there too. You go. More than a B billion dollars, Leon, is up for grabs in Look both the Mega Millions and the Powerball jackpots. Tonight's Mega Million prize is is up to $977 million. If no ticket matches tonight's number, the Mega will likely surpass $1 billion for the sixth time in history. Mm. And that Powerball, remember that old thing, uh. Saturday's drawing? <laughs> oh, that's all meager, yeah. $750 million. No, that's a piker. Well, good luck uh, if, you, nothing. if you pay. Who, who needs that? Play. Who yeah. needs $750 mil? You know what you don't need is huh. the folks to go, but after taxes, yeah. ooh. <laughs> Who cares? Yes, you and your children's children's children. I'd be children happy to pay those taxes. Are still rich forever. <laughs> and I would give you some, Leon. <laughs> oh, yeah, you I would? I wouldn't leave you here. I'll hold you to that, there too. There you go. Now we got witnesses. <laughs> How about a blast from the past? Facebook is bringing back the poke feature. Uh, now, this was one of the earliest features to promote interaction mm -hmm. among users on the site. And this came with the site's launch back in 2004 long before uh, likes and reactions were introduced on Facebook. Facebook says that it saw a 13-fold increase in poking over the past month, uh, with more than half of all pokes being sent by users between the ages of 18 and 29 years old. You wouldn't think the young people would be doing the poking. It would be the people who have been on yeah. Facebook for the longest. Exactly. Yeah, so we want to hear from you, NBCWashington.com. You can hit up our survey. It's right there. And we will be right back. And welcome back on this Crossing Guard Appreciation Day in the district. How about that? To everyone who celebrates, the safety they provide for students and for everyone in our neighborhoods is definitely something worth celebrating. That's right. News Force Joseph Olmo spent some time with some dedicated helpers this morning at Stoddard Elementary in Northwest D.C. Come on, Finn. Come on, Jack. Let's walk it out, babies. Good morning, sugar. You might not remember everything from when you were this age. How you doing, mama? But I'm willing to take a bet. Come on, let's rock and roll. You do remember the person who was there to start. Let's walk it out, folks. And finish your day at school. Go, let's run. Come on, you gotta let her go. You gotta let her go, cause she wanna run. And it didn't take long for us to see the community's love. Are they celebrating you? <laughs> That's so perfect. Yes, I'm so happy. This is an amazing human being. Oh appreciation, admiration for Deborah Walker. She's even got her name on the sidewalk. Love you, baby. Love you. Deborah has been a safety technician for a decade, just one of over 200 across D.C. That's wrong. Deb, on behalf of you and all the safety techs out there, thank you for all you do. Small token of our appreciation. Can I get a Honored today on Crossing Guard Day for the job they do every day. Thank you so much. We come out here in all types of weather, and 
just to hear somebody to say thank you for the the work that we do. We um, we do a great job. So the next time you see a crossing guard near you, give them a high five or a fist bump. You appreciate the work they do in keeping us all safe. Come on, babes. I'm Joseph Omo. Keep walking, don't stop, babies. News 4. Happy Friday, happy Friday. <laughs> Indeed, happy, happy Friday. Friday. Way to go, Miss Deb. Oh, that That's is awesome. awesome. You love to see that. Yeah, we need to show them all the appreciation that they deserve, especially because they are protecting what is most precious to us. Absolutely. Our own children. Absolutely. A great way to go into the weekend. And thank you so much for joining us here on the News 4 Rundown. I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Leon Harris. Glad we could send you out to the weekend with a smile. Mm -hmm. Have a great one. Stay safe and we'll see you on the other side.